Okay, so I'm recording the uh, video for the uh, first APIs uh, project called PageViews, and uh, this is based on the Wikipedia API that's called PageViews. And uh, an API stands for Application Programming Interface, and the way that we're going to be using it is to access data that a website like Wikipedia or Twitter provides. Um, and uh, if it's called an application programming interface because if you are a programmer developing a Wikipedia client, like an app that allows you to view Wikipedia, then you would use APIs to access that data. And we're not doing that, obviously, but uh, it's the same principle that we're going to be accessing data to analyze from Wikipedia, and so it's called an API. Uh, the main difference between this and what we've done before where we've downloaded data to begin with is that with these APIs usually there's just too much data and we couldn't download a data file that would allow us to look at all the Wikipedia views that have happened and so um, we, we use this approach uh, which allows us to just take pieces of the data and then analyze whatever uh, we uh, specifically ask for. So uh, we have this new uh, page views package. We also have this DT package that's uh, that's new for us. Uh, it stands for data table and uh, just allows us to create different kinds of tables of data uh, that we'll see as we go down. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. And uh, one of the functions in page views is this top articles. And so Got to make sure we load those packages first. And uh, so when I run this, uh, it defaults to October 1st, 2015. I'm not sure if that was the first day that the data is available, but that's the day that it gives. And it just shows you what the top articles were on that day, uh, which seems really odd, actually. I don't know who Annie Besant is, and I don't know what the song is, but apparently people were interested in it in... 2015. Uh, but you can kind of scroll over and see some of the other uh, columns. You got the date, there's that October 1st, and, uh, and a few other things. Um, now, in order to specify the date instead of using this October 1st date, you can use this here, start date, and you use this as dot date with a capital D for date, and then you can put the date uh, kind of in normal uh, as you would normally write it uh, and in quotes. And so let's run that, and you can see I just picked this date kind of randomly. Um, what is that? Uh, uh, August 13th, 2016. And I realized when I looked at it, Michael Phelps. And 2016 Summer Olympics, it, it was when the Olympics were going on that, in that summer of 2016. And Michael Phelps must have been winning some races or something. And so he was at, he was the, the top searched article there. Um, uh, and so um, what, what I say is that it's, it's good practice down here. It's good practice when you get data from the Internet like this to, instead of just running this section over and over again, um, take it and save it into a, an object or variable in R. And so we're going to call this top. So it's the same command as above here, but we've just got that little arrow. And again, we can do that arrow with option dash. Oops, option dash, and it'll give us that little arrow so we don't have to type the, uh, the less than and then the dash symbol there. Um, so I'm going to run that, and nothing appears in the screen because all it's doing is taking that information from this table here and putting it into this top. And you should be able to see it appears over here in the as data in the global environment if you've got that open. Um, now, uh, an important command that uh, we should know and use a lot in R is this select. And what that does is it selects the columns that we want. So let's say we want to select language and article. We could put those in parentheses, and then it would only keep those two columns and get rid of all the other ones. In this case, we want to keep article and views. So if we pipe 
top into this select command and run it, then it just keeps those two kind of most important columns that we want to keep. The name of the article and then this is how many views uh, happened on that day. So it got rid of all these other ones. Project, which is the same in language, which was um, kind of, you know, not that important for us. Um, the other weird thing is that it's got these two articles at the top. One is called main page, which isn't really an article. It's just the front page of, of Wikipedia. And then the other one is the search page, which again is not an article. And that has, you know, you can see it's got, what is that, 59 million? Is that right, I think, uh, views? But that's not, you know, that's just people going to the main page of Wikipedia. And then the search page, it looks like it has almost 2 million. Whereas Michael Phelps has got 656,000 views, and that's more that's more reasonable to look at because that's what people were searching for and, and reading those articles. So really we want to get rid of these first two pages because they're not real uh, uh, articles. Uh, and to do that, uh, we use this filter command uh, that we've used before, but we want to get rid of them. So we want to filter uh, all of the articles that are not main page and special search. And to do that, there's uh, this exclamation point is what we use. Uh, that means uh, not. So we want to filter and keep all the articles that are not the main page, and then I have a comma here, and that are not the search page. And you'll see that a lot in computer languages, that the exclamation point is a not, which seems a little weird to me, but, uh, but that's what it is. So when we run this, you'll see that now it's filtered, basically filtered out the main page and the search page. And so this is a pretty good list now of the articles that people were viewing on that day in 2016. Now I wanted to show you this data table package um, and uh, it says copy and paste the above chunk but put it in a new line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, copy it, paste it down here and then what I'm going to do is put in our pipe and that's done with command shift M so we don't have to type in, you know, it's percent greater than percent but we can get it uh, just with that key key combination. And then I'm just going to use it in a really simple way. I'm just going to put data table and um, you can see what it looks like. It creates a table. It looks similar to this one. It looks a little fancier. Um, it actually sometimes doesn't look that great in our studio, but it looks really good when you put it onto a web page. And one of the nice things about it is that you it's kind of interactive so you can show more than 10 you can show um, you can sort so let's say I wanted to sort the articles alphabetically I can just click on uh, an article at the top there and you can see it starts with numbers and then um, you know goes to A's and B's etc uh, I can do search I can type in something here uh, let's say if there's any articles with the name Matt Okay, Matt Anderson, Matthew McConaughey, you know, so um, it's just a little bit of a fancier table than the standard table that's generated in R. Um, and you can do a lot of custom uh, customizations on it. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste this again. And it says this time um, in the parentheses of data table put class equals cell border stripe. So I'm going to just copy that and paste it into the parentheses of data table. And that's just a kind of a customization that you can do. And you can see it it, it adds, I don't know, I guess it added these lines, these vertical lines here between the columns. Um, so it's, it added that cell border and that's the stripe. So that's just a small thing. But um, here's another one. Uh, there's a format style, which is part of uh, the data table. And so you can just pipe it again into this format style. And uh, you can do colors. And so in this case, it's going to take this column article and make it this funny light golden 
rod yellow color. So if we just execute that, you can see it uh, makes that column into that color. So that's, uh, again, kind of an odd one, but just to show you a few of the things that, that you can do. Um, you can also, uh, I say you can go to this, this site here, and if you hit Command and then click on that link, it'll take you to this website that just was one website that had a bunch of the color names. And so uh, let's say we did light coral. I'll just copy that. And then let's see, let's get rid of that tab. And then um, if I go back here, copy that. And it says, uh, add another format style line, but this one changing the views column to another color. So I'm going to just type that, do format style, and the S is capital. And this time, putting views in quotes, comma, and then we'll do background color equals, and then what was it, light coral? And let's see if I did that right. And did I not type that in correctly? I thought it was a light coral. Let's try that again. I got something wrong there. Hmm. Let's try a different one. For some reason, that let's try a. Uh, Turquoise. Uh, am I doing something else wrong here? Views, background color equals. Oh, I spelled background wrong. <laughs> okay, background color, there you go. Let's see if that does it. Okay. All right, so background color equals turquoise. Let's try that light coral, see if that worked. Okay, all right, so there we go. So um, now I wanna look at how to graph the data. Um, and so we're gonna use this ggplot. And so I'm gonna take this, uh, this top that we did before, which is those top articles on August uh, 16th or whatever that was, uh, or August 15th, 2016. We're going to select those two relevant columns. We're going to filter those out. We're going to take the top 10 in this case, and let's run that. And so instead of um, before, you could scroll through many, many. Let's just look at the top 10. And then we're going to take that top part here and then just put it on top of this ggplot. And I'm going to make the x variable the article and y the views. And so that's here and make that into a, a, a basically a bar graph or what they call a column graph. So let's run that. And you can see uh, it didn't really work very well because the names are kind of blending into one another. And so we want to just spend a little bit of time to fix this. So I'm going to copy this, paste, and it says use as factor to put the bars in order. So what I'm going to do, it says replace this with this as factor. So basically what I'm going to do here is you could copy and paste that if you want, but I'm going to do as underscore factor and put article in parentheses. And then it's, the other thing I want to do is flip the coordinates. So instead of having, uh, I want to put these names so they're on the on the left side here instead of on the bottom, and that will make them easier to see. I think. So you do that, and you need the plus sign in ggplot. Remember, instead of the pipe. And I'm going to do coord underscore flip. And then you do also need the parentheses there. So let's see if that worked. Okay.
So there you go. So now you got the axes flipped, so you can read those better. Um, one thing uh, that uh, I want to do here is make the the numbers normal. So the, they use R uses the scientific notation, which is a little annoying to uh, to read. I mean, I assume that this so six times ten to the fifth, so that would be six hundred thousand, I guess. Um, but why not just put 600,000 instead of this funny funny language? And so we can do that with this command here. Uh, we're using this uh, scales uh, is uh, uh, using the using just commas rather than scientific notation. Um, so what I want to do is just again take this. I'm going to copy it, paste it down here. And then I'm going to add that line, so scale y, so that's the y axis, and I'm going to turn it into commas. So I'm just going to add that with a plus sign. Um, number two, it says reverse the order. So right now, it's a little funny because I've got the smallest at the top and the largest at the bottom, and I want to reverse that. I think, I think it makes more sense to have the, the biggest ones at the top and then descending. And so... To do that, I'm going to use this uh, FCT reverse, so factor reverse. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put that FCT underscore REV, and then I want that parenthesis to end there after, after article. Uh, and then I say we can add some color. So let's do in a geom column, we can put fill equals and then whatever color you want I'll put uh, let's put uh, green okay so let's try that okay there we go it's kind of a neon green um, but you can see the uh, the axis makes more sense now with uh, commas instead of scientific notation we've got the largest at the top and we've got this this horrible uh, uh, bright green color but uh, uh, Okay, so, uh, and it says now finish it by adding the following line. So again, what I'm going to do is just take all of this. We know that that works. And I'm going to paste this down here and add this line. So this is what adds our labels with the um, title and then the x-axis and y-axis and all that. So I'm going to put the plus sign and then I'm going to paste that, uh, that line. So now this is kind of the finished product. And there we see top Wikipedia articles, August 13th, 2016. And we've got uh, a, a, a little bit better. Instead of this funny FCT rev as factor article, now we've got, it just says article. And so um, that looks a lot better and, and number of views. Okay. So now we want to look at some article uh, views uh, over a time period. And, and what I want to do is instead of looking at what the top articles were on a particular day uh, using that top articles function, we're going to use this article page views. And we're going to tell it, we're going to tell Wikipedia that we want the number of page views that occurred on a particular article. So I thought we would look up influenza. And uh, we want it over a date range, so we're going to have a start date and an end date, whereas before we just had that one, the start date. Um, and we're going to use a different command here. It's article, article page views instead of top articles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take this command looking at influenza searches or views um, over a period of a couple of years. And we're going to put this all into this object called flu. And then this is going to take a look at it, glimpse it, uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so there we go. And you can see um, that uh, it has eight columns, eight variables. It's got about a thousand observations, which makes sense of, you know, 350 uh, days in a year. And we've got about uh, three years there. So we've got about a thousand observations and we've got the number of views here on each day. So one day it was 2000, the next day it was 3000, etc. And so uh, what I'm going to do is make a uh, quickie kind of a line graph of that. So we're going to take flu, pipe it into ggplot. We're going to make x the 
the x-axis the date so we can see over time and then the y-axis is going to be the number of views and so kind of the idea here is that this gives us a sense of, of when people are interested in this particular topic, right? When are people looking up influenza? And it makes sense that it would be during the flu months, which are kind of, you know, it must be right around here. This must be January, February, right? And this the line in between the years is like June and July. So that's where it's low. And then it peaks up again in the winter months and wow there was a big increase here like in the fall of 2017 a big spike um, but otherwise you know you see you see it, it was uh, common for people to look that up on Wikipedia in the winter months and uh, so we're gonna make a couple of modifications to this and it says to uh, put the color color equals red and notice that it's not fill uh, equals a color now it's because uh, it's a line graph it's the it's color equals and then it says add add the following which is just got the uh, some titles and and stuff like that so we're gonna put the plus sign there and we're gonna add that and kind of uh, make it look a little better Let's see if I can get rid of this toolbar. Let's see a little more room here. Okay. Um, and, oh yeah, and I said notice you see this big jump in 2017, and we can make a little table and see if we can figure out what when that was. And so I thought I would just uh, uh, look at the top. Uh, we're arranging by views, and with the minus sign, it's descending order. So this should put whatever that day was should be at the top so that was the 20,000 views so that's that 20,000 there right at the top that peak and it was October 23rd 2017 I don't know there must have been a big flu outbreak or something that day I don't know but um, that was the day that uh, by far the biggest number of searches for influence on, on Wikipedia Okay, so now um, it's I, I, I want to uh, show you how to combine data. So uh, we can look at uh, another illness, and I thought we could look at diabetes and then combine it with our flu data to kind of compare them. So what I want to do here is go back up to this. I want to copy this line where we got the flu data and then come back down here and it says uh, basically take this but search for diabetes and I'm gonna call that diabetes so I'm gonna just kinda edit this create a new object called diabetes I'm gonna search for diabetes mellitus which is the full name um, and I think it does matter if it's cat you wanna be capital D lowercase m Think that does matter and then we'll keep the date the same I actually think I'm gonna to make it a little easier to read to put some uh, returns in there okay so um, this should show us how often people are searching for diabetes and we can go over here to diabetes and look at this um, and we can see the views 5,000, 6,000, around there. And uh, oh, it says to graph it like above. So I'm going to take, um, let's go for this original graph here. I'm going to copy that. And in order to graph diabetes, I'm just going to replay. Everything should be the same except for I'm going to start with that. Okay, so there you can see, wow, there was a big spike on one particular day there. Otherwise, they were right around, looks like 5,000 or so views. And there was a big spike up to about 25 to 30,000 on, on one particular day there. Um, but what I really wanted to show you with this is how to combine so we can compare searches for flu 
to searches for, for diabetes. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to use this bind rows command. And if we have two data sets that are otherwise pretty much the same, so we've got our diabetes data set there, and then we've got our flu data set here, and they've got all the same variables, project language, article access, etc. And then for diabetes, the same thing, project language, etc. What we can do when we use this bind rows, it'll just take this one data set, the diabetes data set, and just plop it right on top of the flu data set. It'll just bind them, it'll kind of just uh, com combine them together. Uh, and so uh, we're going to call this new data set illness because it includes both flu and diabetes and use bind rows. And uh, it won't show us anything because all we did is put that into illness. But if we go and look at it, we can see, okay, so this is influenza. So this is just the same influenza data set that we looked at before. And if we keep on scrolling down here, now there's where the diabetes uh, data set starts. So you can see what it did. It just bound those, those sets of uh, data um, by row there. Um, now uh, I'm going to create a plot of this, but I'm going to add a new line, color equals article. And so let's come back up here. I'm going to copy this. And a couple of changes I want to make. So I don't want to uh, plot diabetes. Now I want to plot illness. So I'm going to say illness and then send that to ggplot. And then within this AES parentheses, I'm going to add one more thing that says color equals article. And you can see article is, if we go back to illness here, article is the name of that article. So it was either influenza or diabetes mellitus. And so we're going to have two colored lines, two different colored lines that'll show us which article people were searching for. And there you go. You can see what that looks like. So this is comparing people's searches for these two articles. And you can see diabetes is a little higher probably than flu with, the, with a few exceptions. Um, you can see that uh, influenza is a little more seasonal, right? It peaks in the winter months and declines in the summer months. And uh, you can see that diabetes is a, a little more flat. Okay, um, so what I thought I would do is to, to kind of uh, show you maybe something uh, a little more psychological here. You know, we're kind of interested in um, what people search for. And the idea is that this is giving us a, a, some insight into people's interests uh, that are maybe a little more pure than simply uh, asking them in a survey, you know, where people are sitting at home and searching for stuff on the internet and reading about it. And we can see, you know, how many, how many people are doing that. And so what I thought we would do here is look at a few mass shootings that have occurred and see if that increases the search for the article on gun control in Wikipedia. And uh, so what I did here is uh, I looked up the date of this uh, of a shooting in Texas. It was May 18th, 2018. And I created this date range that was uh, seven days before that. So if it was May 18th, I looked at May 11th, and then uh, 14 days later. So I went through June 1st. And I wanted just to look at searches not for the shooting itself, but for this gun control article. And uh, to see if the fact that this happened and was in the news, if that increased people's searches for gun control. And so let's go ahead and run this. And then I did a new chunk here. What this does is it labels the, the day, seven days. So negative seven was seven days prior uh, uh, over to 14. And that colon, if you do one colon, let me show you that here, actually. If I do um, create a new chunk, if I do one colon 10 and then... Uh, run that, it'll just give me every number between 1 and 10. So in R, if you use a colon, or if I do negative, uh, negative 10 colon 10, then it'll give me all the numbers between those two.
So that's what that colon does in R. And what I did there is uh, I created a day variable. So I know it's seven days prior to the shooting, six days, etc., up to one, two, three, four, uh, up to 14 days after it. And then I created another variable called event, which in this case will be Texas, and I'm going to compare it to another another shooting, um, and so that's why, uh, and I'll name that the other one. So, so I'm just going to do that, and it's I'm just going to put that back into Texas, so uh, that won't show anything there. But it created those two new columns. So if I click on Texas here, there's the day column, and then there's uh, the event column. Okay, uh, and so we can get a quick look at it, and you can see, uh, so those are the number of searches for the gun control article, so about a thousand or so, and I don't know, there might be an effect there. You can see it was in the 600, 700s before the shooting, and then went, and then day zero is the day it happened, and then maybe it went up a little bit for the couple days after, uh, up into the, you know, 1,000, 1,500 area and then came back down again. It's a little hard to, maybe I'm just seeing <laughs> seeing something that's not there, but um, uh, you can uh, see the graph and, and judge it for yourself. So then uh, I thought I'd do the same thing for, there was a California shooting um, on November 7th, uh, 2018. And um, so I did, basically what this chunk does is all of those same things that I did before, but it does it all in one chunk. It does California, looks at gun control, looks at those dates, creates that um, new day column in the California column, and then plots it. So let's just run all that. And there you see, again, and, and again, to me, it doesn't really look like there was much of a change, but maybe there was a little bit of a peak here right after, you know, a day or two after the shooting. But it also went up, you know, about two weeks after as well. So it's it's hard to tell. Um, but now what I want to do is, is use this bind rows to combine the Texas and California shootings in order to compare them. And so I created a graph here. I used the minimal theme and put the um, put the labels and stuff. Um, but uh, uh, let's go ahead and run that. Okay, so there it says views of the Wikipedia gun control article before and after two mass shootings, and we have the California and the Texas event, and then zero. That's the day it happened, and so. I'm not sure. You can judge for yourself and and see whether there was a an increase uh, uh, after after the shootings or not. Uh, in the assignment, I'm going to ask you to to pick two other shootings and basically do the same thing that I did here. So I will end the video there and uh, create a new one for this assignment.